Use a like that. Uh, all know. right, everyone. I, my name's Crazy Joe. I host a YouTube channel and podcast called Megapodtastic. And this is my first time ever moderating a panel. We and would never have known that, would we? <laughs> two weeks ago, I met Gil for the first time, and I told him, hey, two weeks from now, I'm moderating your panel. I've never done that before. And he gave me the best advice ever. He said, introduce me, and I'll take over. So with that, this is Gil Gerard, and this is Felix Silla. Wonderful. Thank you. Didn't he do a great job? Yeah. I told him if he opened his mouth after that, I'd make fun of him all afternoon. Turn it on, Felix. Let's say something. Can you block the light for me? What? Just block the lights. Thank you. Why don't you come up here with me? I will. Okay. Come on. People can't see you for the table. Come on. Stand up, Felix. You know, after 40 years, oh. I still have to listen. Yeah, right. You don't think that's the first time he's heard that in 40-some years we've known each other? 20, 40. I said 40-some years. Some Jesus years. Christ, get your Italian ears well, off. come down and talk Start to me. Start thinking about listening to American English. I'm Italian. I know you're this, Italian. Not you. Yeah. No, anyway. And that fungu. Hey, uh, oh. Yeah. And that's not an Italian dish, by the way. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no spaghetti either. And no spaghetti. Yeah. We just had Italian food, didn't we? You had. I didn't have it. Oh, that's right. You had a roast beef sandwich. Roast beef. That's what I was talking. I had clams with, with white sauce and linguine. Yeah. I had a roast beef I probably gravy, right? smell like a, a garlic hose all the rest of the afternoon. Uh, but it was good. Anyway. So, how are you doing? Are you all having a good time? Uh, Anything I can do to mess that up, let me know. Okay. So, what we usually do is we ask, we, you know, you guys ask questions and we try to answer them as honestly as possible. And if we can't, we'll just lie. <laughs> so somebody raise their hand and ask a question. Yes, sir. Well, I actually never worked with him. Um, I met Mel in the second season when they changed his voice. Um, because what I did was I said, either give it back to Mel or find another Buck Rogers. So he was very grateful that I took that stand for him. So he invited me over to his home. We became friends. He did all of his stuff. He had a studio in his home. And Mel was just, he was a great guy. All the people, Buster Crab, Mel, all these people who were like legends in my mind uh, were t unbelievably nice people. And I was friends with all of them. Buster till I talked to him probably once a month till the day he died. So, you know that Mel still does his stuff, even though he passed away. Yeah, see, you're looking as weird as I looked the first time I heard that. But I talked to his son, and he was saying, you know, my dad still does them. I'm like, oh, sure, okay. What seance have you been in? And what he said was that his father had used, has practically said every word you could think of and it was all on computer. So all the stuff that's done now with Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd and all that stuff, all those voices are his voice that are on computer. And they just fit in those words and that's it. So Mel Blank is still doing the, the voices. Huh? I'm sure he better be. But I, what? What do you want? I was going to say, we got a question over here. Sorry about that. <laughs> I thought you were done. Don't be you sorry about getting of... a question. It's fine. <laughs> so my fiance has recently introduced me to Buck Rogers. What is your favorite episode of the series? Well, other than the feature, I like the, the Seder. Even though it was the second season, which I hated, um, the show itself uh, really kind of mirrored what I always wanted to see happen with Buck Rogers, and that is I wanted Buck to stay on Earth. And have have adventures on Earth, and the whole idea of that show so mirrored what might be happening, like on the prairie, someplace on Earth, even though it was another planet. Other than the fact that we came off of that ship, whatever the the searcher. Thank you. I've kind of blocked it out because it really pissed me off that second season. Because we, you know, we basically ripped off Battlestar Galactica. 
And I thought, why would you do that? They canceled Battlestar just before Buck Rogers started. Now we're picking up Battlestar, which was canceled before we got started. And of course, then we were canceled. But um, anyway, that, I like that. Basically, I got to play a character, which was kind of fun. Uh, is, I wasn't playing the hero. I got to put on the beard and all that kind of stuff, which is fun to do. So it, it was just, for me, it was more, more interesting. I wasn't going and saving a planet someplace. But it was the relationship with the kid and the lady and then trying to get his dad back for him and stuff like that. It was just a nice story. So that's why I liked it. The feature I liked because it was the feature. And it was the first one. So, yes, and then you. Thank you. Did you ever actually get hit in any of the fights you had? Did you ever actually get hit instead of a fake punch? No. No. Thank God. No, they were, they were very heavily choreographed. And if you remember, we did a lot of martial arts. So, you know, it was like there was a lot of kicks and stuff basically done by my stunt double, whose name was Michael Vendrell. Um, and actually, we came up with the idea to do martial arts instead of regular fist fights and stuff. Um, because we thought, okay, kids are gonna be watching this show, so we don't wanna encourage some young boy or girl to take a, a pop shot at, you know, because they've seen the fight on, on Buck Rogers. We thought if we kept it sort of esoteric in martial arts, if they were interested in doing something like that, they would have to have training to do it. And that might help them to not be so aggressive with their siblings. So that was the whole idea of why we did martial arts instead of regular fights and stuff. Yeah, and no, no one ever hit me and lived. Anyway, no, no. And then back here, yes. Hi, I just want to thank you for coming out. You made my whole weekend. My birthday's tomorrow, so this was a great weekend for me. Um, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Tomorrow. Uh, move over a little bit. Um, my question is, how was it working with Jamie Lee Curtis? It was great. Because I love that. That was one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, she was fantastic. She was so sweet. We were on location up in the, the high desert, uh, which was kind of brutal. But she baked pies. For me and for uh, you know some of the crew, they loved her. I loved her. I thought she was terrific. Really nice. She was a nice lady. And we've been friends since that time. Yes. Back there. Right there. I'm pointing at you. I had two questions, but you already you answered my one about there. the second season. So I'm sorry. I had, I had he two. was asking me a question. <laughs> sorry. I had two questions, but you actually answered mine about the second season, about how you felt about it. Yeah. My second question was for Felix. Do you find it harder to act without being seen as opposed to just being acting out in the open? Like, is it harder to act in costume? You know what? It doesn't matter. As long as they pay the bills, that's all I care, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we were with this lady and asked a question. We were just huh? right by her. She's what? been raising her head for three days. That's Ann. Yeah, well, yeah. you want to ask Hi, a Ann. question? She's, no, she's shy. Ann she's... and I talk every day on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. She, you want to ask a question? No. Okay. But Hold on. Go ahead. Go talk to Ann. But I, I still don't think about I was just curious how you got into acting if you were a math major to start with. Because you mentioned that in the video to my daughter. That you were a math major. Oh, yeah. She's, she's the one that loves math. Right. And I said I was a math major, and look where I am now. You just never know. Um, actually, I was, uh, I was a math major, chemistry and biology minor, because I was in pre-med, and I decided I didn't want to be a doctor, so that's what I did. I just took all, that, all those hours. I had to do something with them. Um, and I was an industrial chemist for a few years before I became an actor. I did some of the original work on the Titan II missile fuels and oxidizers. And um, I had 15 laboratories and 45 men in three states working for me. 
and I was doing reports for the Graduate Institute of Technology for the University of Arkansas for the uh, Industrial Development Commission uh, and something else I've forgotten. Anyway, I was bored. <laughs> I was like, you know, this is fine, but this, and the odd thing is I'm 76 now, and I thought to myself, and I was about 24, 25 years old, and I said, what do I want to be doing when I'm 70 years old? What do I want, what do I want to look back on that was my life if I'm 70 years old? And this is not what I want to be doing. I don't want to be just doing something that I'm not really that interested in uh, and just making money and whatever. And what I did was I started looking through, I call it the card file of my life, my experiences. And what came up for me was that I had enjoyed all aspects of acting. I was, uh, had a singing group in college called the Ridgeman Trio. And a, an interesting side story to that is we were one of the most popular folk singing groups in the college circuit in Arkansas. And a group called the Four Preps came to my school to sing the concert. And we were asked to sing the intermission to keep people in entertained while they took a break. So we did, and then they came back and they had heard us sing and they asked us to sing a song with them. So we did. And about 20 years later, <clears throat> I was sitting in Glenn Larson's office and I looked up and there was a picture of the four preps. And I said, were you a four prep? And he said, yeah. I said, we worked together 20 years ago when I was in college. And he wrote a song that I loved as a kid as in, in the 50s, I think it was, called Santa Catalina, 26 Miles. Glenn Larson wrote that song. And that was one of my favorite songs. So that was kind of cool. So that was an interesting sidelight to me having. And then I also directed some plays and I starred in some plays uh, throughout college. And then I did community theater. And I thought, you know, I really enjoy this. I enjoy the, all aspects of it. That's the rehearsal as well as the performance. I like the people around it because they were like really lively and on top of things. So I resigned from all those different positions I was holding, sent my company car back, uh, and went to New York and started driving a cab and going to acting school. That was in <clears throat> 1969. But I've made a living in this business solely from this business since 1970. So next year will be my 50th year as an actor, making a living as an actor, or whatever. I also produced and directed and all that kind of stuff. I'm a published poet. I'm published in an anthology of American poets. Yeah, I'm very talented. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta tell you, speaking of, you asked the question about Felix acting, you did, yeah. This guy deserves so much praise because if you understand how much tweaky exists in your mind and your hearts, right? He did that. He created that character through two inches of plastic. You never saw his face or his hands. This man created that character with never being able to see him is amazing. I mean, I had such affection for that character, and it was his fault. <laughs> and think about Cousin It. You never saw his face. He was just this big hairball walking around. But you have feelings about Cousin It, don't you? He created that. That takes real talent. It's easy for me. I stand up, I have lines, I get to, you know, look my best and all that kind of crap. He had none of that. He had no lines. Now, all the lines that Tweaky had later were added after the fact. He had no lines. In the movie, there were no lines at all. All that stuff was added later because he did such a great job creating that character. So would you please give him a hand? <laughs> what? What do you want? What? Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, I want you to say it on the microphone.
say thank you, Gail. Well, the check's on the way. Appreciate it. And, See, uh, it works when you know how to use the damn thing. <laughs> now you're going to screw it up. Why do you keep I'm, turning I'm it off? I'm not a singer like you. Huh? I'm, you know, the lady once asked me a question. Are you done with your whatever? <laughs> I, you went to talk to Anne for 15. Well, that's all you paid me for. That's all you're going to get. Okay. <laughs> okay well, I want to know about the costumes. Like, what was the costume that you hated getting in and out of out of all the ones you've ever done and also for Tweaky how many hours did you have to be in that costume for filming per day actually I really didn't want to be in it more than five ten minutes but we had a lot of problems with the second season with the Crichton yeah you remember <laughs> that ugly thing next to me we used to do a scene up and down the, you know the hallway and all of a sudden we're walking and I look this way and he's spinning around Spinning and hitting the wall, spinning at the wall. So the director said, okay, cut, let's fix the robot. And then in the meantime, they'll leave you there. You're standing there like they don't care about you. They worry about the piece of junk, you know, whatever it was made out of. So finally, you know, I had to tell them, look, this is human in here. Get the thing off my face so I could get a, something to drink or smoke a cigarette, whatever. And then when you're done fixing, whatever you're fixing, Call me back, we'll go to work. Same thing when I have to go to the bathroom. Remember Bob, our yeah. assistant director? Yeah. Then you got fired or someplace? Yeah. I had to go to the bathroom and I'm fully dressed. And the guy said, I said, Bob, I need to go to the bathroom. The guy says, Can you wait five minutes? I said, Okay. So I wait five minutes. Then five minutes went by. I said, Bob, I need to go to the bathroom. Can you wait five minutes? He's trying to protect his job because he was worried about it. Well, he was the first assistant director. Oh, right, right. But and his it, job is to make sure everybody stays on the set. Right, on the set. So when the director needs them, they're there. So if he let me go to the bathroom and all of a sudden they need me, he said, what is he? He said, well, I'm going to go to the bathroom. He get fired, right? But I had to go so bad. So I asked the, the Paul, the wardrobe guy. I said, look, Paul, please take this thing off of me. I got to go to the bathroom. I came back 10 minutes later. They were still playing around doing some of the camera. So if I waited there, it would have been a mess. So... Anyway, there was your best friend, uh, Bob Bender. What did you say, my best friend? No, he wasn't. Oh, Sorry. no. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, no, that's... I did a movie with he was the first AD on <clears throat> in Texas, and I had him banned from the set. I know you did. Because bullshit. Yeah. So, yeah, that was another story uh, for another what time. What was your question, I guess? The other part was, which was harder, which costume was harder for oh, you, the, like Twiggy or... Actually, Tell them about Cousin Ed and what they did with that. No, Cousin Ed wasn't that bad. Tweaky wasn't that bad. The only problem I had with Tweaky, I couldn't go up and down stairs. So the gentleman next to me, he had to pick me up and put me in the ply in the ship. And every five minutes, he says, hey, get my Felix, you're getting fat, you're getting heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, oh, well, there's kids around. I didn't want to say the word, but I used to say a lot of half word. You know, you're getting fed with half you, whatever, you know. Every He's been using day. that word with me for 40-some years. For 47 years. 40-some years, yeah. 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 But I, there was no problem with it. Yeah. He has no problem telling me to F myself. i got to tell you that. <laughs> well, we're friends, right? Yeah. Okay, I could tell you, go, uh, you know, whatever. Can, yeah, we're friends till the walls fall down. No, don't worry about mind, it. Right? Huh? You don't mind, right? Huh? You don't mind. No, I don't mind. You don't mind you, fucker, No, what? <laughs> anyway, that was... You know, not really a lot of problem with the costumes. So. But, you know, you have to do it. You have to, you know, somebody has to pay the bills. Did you get your question yeah. answered, Dan? If yeah. you don't like it, then uh, somebody else is waiting at the door. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Uh-oh. Well, we'll see on all counts. I had a meeting last night that kind of put some cracks in that idea. There's supposed to be a new series coming out called um, Armageddon 2419, based on the book 20, Armageddon 2419, which was written by Philip Nolan, from which Buck Rogers sprang. I don't know. Um, but I'm not sure what's going on with it anymore. I had a, a long meeting last night with, I know, trust me, I've been dealing with this crap for 40 some years. Uh, oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah. So I'm, 
when I get back home, one of the first things I'm going to do is have a little conversation with them about how real this thing is and whether or not they can really move forward with it. Because someone else made an announcement three years ago at San Diego Comic-Con saying that they were going to do a motion picture called Armageddon 2419. And this is a guy who is a real powerhouse in the business. These guys, I'm not so sure about now. So, got to pull back. Thank you. It's been tough because, I mean, I was like, ah, oh, damn, again, one more time. Yeah, I've tried. I tried two years after the show was uh, canceled to talk to the delis who are the people who own the rights to Buck Rogers about doing another movie. I said, the thing made huge money. It was very successful. I'd like to do another movie. And they wanted to do the marketing first. They wanted to do the toys first and then maybe do a movie. I was like, that's not the way it works. You know, you do the movie, if it's popular, you spin off the toys or whatever happens to come out of that movie, and that's your marketing tool. Anyway, so we'll see. And yes, I'm supposed to play the President of the United States in that particular iteration that they were talking about. So we'll see what happens. I just have to... Huh? Well, there's in the Bible, which is basically, here's where the show's going to go for the next five years. Uh, there's a mention in there as a planet of little people. And there's a president of the little people who's a real mean bastard. <laughs> Typecasting if I ever saw it. Right there. Huh? I don't believe you. What is this? What? 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 what well, are you you, I'll show it to you. Oh, you're gonna show it to me when? Yeah, you don't. You need I something. came. I came to this town to have fun, and now you. No, I got my own. Okay. Well, you're, you're okay. starting to. Your eyes starting to. I know. Tear up. Well, you know what? People have a dry eye, and I tell my doctor, why is it dry? You call it dry eyes? It drips all the time. So. It's I, been explained to you. What? It's been explained to you why it's no, called dry eye. No, explained to me. They want to do surgery. What? Said, no, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> anyway. See what I'm saying? Evil What's little that? bastard right there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Perfect casting. What's going on with little people? Who? What's going on with Stand the Stand up, Felix. What? Oh, don't get this. We've been doing this a long time. Whoops, see? What I worry about is an uppercut. He's got a crippling up uppercut, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So why do you do it to me? Huh? Stop sticking my ear. Okay, fine. They didn't hear you. He asked me to stop sticking together. my finger in his ear. Yeah. We have a picture taken, and my finger's right, his finger's right here. My elbow's right there. Uh-huh. I got Yeah, I know. Trust me. Trust you. Yeah. Anyway, little people, what's happening? What? Is that going to be something done with little people? It's a planet of little people. Wow, really? The whole planet. When is going it's to a very small planet. When are they going to do it? Uh, <laughs> when are they going to do it? I don't know. Okay, then. Forget about Please. it. Please. She just asked if you were going to be in it. And I said, well, if it works out, there's this planet of little people and this asshole president <laughs> who's a mean MF. Now I'm and I it. said, you. Now, we've already done that, all right? Oh, now, we're boring it. these people. Let's okay. get moving on. Moving on. Well, can I go moving to, on. Yeah, can I go now? No, you can't. <laughs> okay, why do you say moving on? Well, they'll be PO'd if you leave. No, they're not. They'll know. be stuck with me. They don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Right. So any, uh, anybody else has any other I'm questions? I'm sure somebody's got a question. Yeah. Get her off this. Okay, here oh. you go. Here you go. The question is for both of you. Outside of your professions, what brings you joy in life? So separate from what you get paid for on a daily basis, big or small? Waking up every morning on this side of the grass. <laughs> That's always a good one. Yeah. As they say, it's better to be standing looking at the grass than looking at the roots. So nice. what brings you joy well, you? in life well, other than acting? The same thing, like getting up, get up in the morning, thank God that I'm one more day and I'm here. 
you know, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, right? That's right. Or, or, uh, ten minutes from now. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know, the it's way, just uh, taking joy and living life as best I can on a daily basis. I try to stay very much in the now. It doesn't mean I don't make plans, but I try to enjoy every minute as it goes by. So, you know, it's interesting because if you think about it, you know, God gives us that much time. And there goes another time, another slice, another slice, another slice. See how much time has already gone by? That's like six clicks. Of already, and then there, I'm, what are we, 10 clicks in already? Just from the last time I clicked. All those spaces of time. So I figure, okay, I, I ought to be able to handle that. So I, don't, I try to deal with it in those kinds of slices. Not literally that way. Because I end up being like this all the time. But yeah, I try to, I, I make an effort every day to enjoy as much of life as I can. As much of being here today as I can. Same with you? You said exactly right, man, everything. Of course I did. Yeah, That's why I, I get know. the big bucks. That's why I'm listening to you. There you go. Okay. So, so somebody else? Uh, uh, you've had a turn. Hold on a second. Oh. Yes, sir. Then you're next. Okay. I know it's your birthday. Don't be pushy. <laughs> we'll yeah. sing later. What's your, your favorite experience as an actor throughout your career? I mean, if you had to point to, you know, one role you played or one one uh, production you were involved in, can you can you talk about you know what made that your favorite experience and 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 why? Well, actually, the whole thing has been my favorite experience. The people that I've been blessed to meet, to spend time with, to act with, the moments that I've had. Uh, I remember when I did Airport 77, I spent every day with Christopher Lee in the, in the uh, VIP lounge that was part of the, of the movie and then became our lounge. Uh, and we spent every day, I spent it listening to Lee's stories, Chris's stories. Um, I will tell you this, that there was uh, Jack Lemon and I became friends. And of course, he played the pilot. And every morning, Chris and I would be sitting there talking. I'd be listening to Chris, basically. He had great stories. Anyway, Jack would walk by on his way to what they call craft services, which are the people who dispense coffee and snacks and whatever. In the morning, he'd get his coffee, and he had a mug that looked like a, somebody's tub. And he'd be walking along like this, and I'd go, Morning, Jack, and he'd go, Fuck you, Gerard. And kept on every morning. So I've been told to go F myself since I've been in this business almost daily. Since I learn, met him, it's been almost daily. Did he learn from me or did I learn from him? Huh? F four. Did he learn from me or from him? That's uh, the show. It was before. Say it again. Ride. That's the airplane thing that you did. It was before Buck Rogers, right? Yeah, it was so before I Buck Rogers. I learned from him to say F you, right? You learned it from him, okay. yeah, right. right. Now I know. Yeah, you learned it from a good guy. Right. But anyway, that was, it's just stuff like that. Olivia de Havilland, Joseph Cotton, Jimmy Stewart, to work with those people is like, and stand and talk to Jimmy about how his daughter's in Africa working around Mount Kilimanjaro, and she has a, an animal sanctuary or whatever. I mean, you know, it's just spending time. Jimmy and I ended up doing the Hollywood Christmas Parade together. And this is a guy that, you know, my dad and I used to watch. You know, like some of you say, you, you're, you and your dad watch me. My dad and I watch Jimmy Stewart movies. We, had go, we went to the drive-in one time at the Arkansas Razorback drive-in. I, I grew up in Arkansas. And we sat in a snowstorm watching Strategic Air Command with the wipers wiping off the stuff. And I'm watching this movie. It's like, I was not gonna leave until that movie was over with. So it was that kind of thing, huh? Yeah, snow coming in over it, incredible. But it's like, you know, they're just meeting Michael Landon and working with Mike and becoming friends with him. Meeting Buster Crabb, Joseph Cotton, you know, with the third man, classic movies that I've watched and said, wow, this is incredible. But it's just, you know, I did a Bob Hope special and I did a skit with Bob Hope and Danny Thomas. 
we did a spoof of Charlie's Angels. And the great thing was when we, when we finished the rehearsal, the two guys that I grew up with who were like legendary turned to me and said, hey, you know what, kid? You're really good. And I said, okay, I can die now. It's all right. But I mean, that, those, those moments are scattered throughout my entire life as, a, as an actor. So it's not like one particular favorite moment. The whole thing is my favorite moment. The good with the bad. There was some bad stuff, but it can't outweigh the really good stuff that happens. So overall, it's been, it's been a hell of a journey, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, otherwise, I wouldn't still be doing it. Yeah. Now you may talk. Thank you. I Birthday just boy. Keep things lively. Uh, now, on the second season with The Searcher, I know you didn't like it, but I like the fact that they gave Tweaky a love interest. What? They gave Tweaky a love interest. Well, you need to talk to him about that. Oh, I know. But then I also want to ask, why didn't Buck Rogers ever, you know, with the princess, you know, why didn't you ever get together with the princess? Well, you know, he was frozen for 500 years. <laughs> Guess what never thought out? I think, unfortunately, as he was exiting the, the thing, he hit the side of the door. We, uh, we only have I'm trying five. to be subtle here. So you want to know about his romantic I, interest? I just got to let you guys know we have to stop the panel in five minutes. I was told we have to stop at three, so we got about five minutes left. Why do we have to stop at three? You got somebody else coming in? You guys want to stop at three? We got six minutes otherwise. <laughs> yeah, let's stop at three, right? They're supposed to stop at three. Six we have six minutes. Well, hurry up. Whoa. What? Well, he wants to know about your romantic interest. Let's Would you sing, answer let, the man? No, let's sing happy birthday. He's not his birthday till tomorrow. Well, let's sing today. We won't be here tomorrow. That, we, that's his loss. Can we sing? He's not going to be here either, right? He You're going to sing it to him in Italian? No. Why not? Well, we're not in Italy. And he's probably but you're Italian. He doesn't understand. We just had Italian food today. No, no you didn't have Italian food. We've already gone through that. See, he we're starting understand. to repeat ourselves. These people are like bored are we shitless. Are going to sing right or not? Now. Like, God, I can't believe these guys are talking about their damn Italian food again. We, huh? What? Never mind. Okay. Oh. I don't know anything about his love interest. What love interest are you talking about? Where, where is he? Remember the golden... Oh, the gold... The little oh, golden yeah, robot. yeah. I have no idea what happened. Yeah. I didn't even know... What was that, a second year or first year? I think I she ran out of grease. I'm not sure. It was, uh, it was Patty Maloney playing that part. Yes, I know. Patty Maroney? Yeah, Patty. A friend of mine. Couldn't they get somebody who wasn't Italian? She wasn't Italian. Was Jesus not Italian. Christ, what? She was not Italian. Maroney? Maloney. Maloney or whatever, Baloney? Whatever, not Baloney. Maroney, Baloney? No. All right. Uh, I have no idea. I, I don't either. All right. We've got two minutes. What, do you got to go to the bathroom or something? No, I want to sing happy birthday. Huh? You want to sing happy birthday? Can you want to sing happy birthday to this guy? Come on. That's okay. All right, let's, let's go. Ready? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Weird Foxman. Happy birthday to you and many more. Okay, are you happy now? I'm very happy now. Jesus, God Almighty. Now we can go pack and go home. All right. It's been a really nice day. Why are you leaving? You're leaving. Hello. Do you have a card that says you can leave? You know you need a pass. What? Even if you have to go to the bathroom, you need to pass. We have to raise your hand. You don't hand. have to really come back all the way in. I'm just teasing you, really. And it, particularly if you have to go to the bathroom, you really don't have to come all the way back. Don't, don't listen to this guy. Aren't you, you glad whatever, you got up? Do whatever you like. <laughs> Are you all having fun here? I've had a blast. We really enjoyed it. Very Such nice. nice people. Yeah. Really. All of you are nice. The people who run this thing are great. Then really, really nice people. I've enjoyed it a lot. I hope to come back. 
Thank you. Thank you. They were nice, really. They're very nice. Why did we got to leave? Wait a minute. Got I was told in the panel by three. That's what they told me. Yeah, there's another yeah. session that starts in a few minutes. Uh, that's the only thing. Yeah. We'd Who's love that? to have you for the next six hours. You know, Who's you're fun. <laughs> oh. Oh, my God, it's the voice of God. Yes, Master, or whatever. Uh, must be one of the guardian angels. What is the name of that show that has the angels and demons and stuff? It's, I have huh? no idea. Wow. No, no, this is a, it's been on for like 14 years. It's going on. Supernatural, yeah. My wife does jewelry for jewel, Supernatural. Oh. She designs it and makes it. <laughs> huh? No, no, she's, she's great. I love having her with me, really. It, that's not the reason. Um, but if, you wanna, if you're interested, she has a website called Ray Guns and Rust. Guess why it's called Ray Guns? Yes, but she does really beautiful stuff. So you guys, if you're looking for something for your wife, this is a commercial interruption. Uh, take a look at some of the jewelry she's made. She's, if she's, she hasn't sold out already, because a lot of her stuff sells pretty fast. But take a look at it. Take a look at it, take a look at it. And take a look at it. Have you seen it? She's on my Facebook page all the time. Yeah, and also my Twitter account. And then I retweet her. So take a look. You don't have to buy anything. I'm just going to take a look. If you like it, go ahead and buy it. So. There's no pay no overtime, you know. He's, what do you he's want wet, now? He's wet past 3 o'clock, you know. There's no, there's no overtime here. What? We're not working. We're not getting paid overtime. We're not getting paid overtime. Like do. We're not getting paid overtime? No. Oh, you're done. We're getting paid? No. <laughs> no. I think we're... <laughs> no. I think it's time to get out. Get out of here. It's 3 o'clock. Well, it's 2.59.47. We have 13 seconds left. Anybody got another question? Well, you're right. Quit. Yes. Huh? Uh, he's molting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, huh? Well, it's been fun. Thank he's you. being pickled for Thanksgiving. Not what? Done yet. They're waiting for the dance, right? Who said what? They're waiting for the dance for the Go big ahead. ballroom. They you want did a dance. a dance. Remember that? No, one? but they're waiting. Oh, they're God. Just ready to go. All right, I'm going to tell you a story about that ballroom dance, okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. We worked on choreography for that dance scene for two weeks. When I wasn't shooting the show, I was going to rehearsals for that dance scene. Two weeks. We had this whole thing mapped out. It was a big, big to-do. We get to the day of shooting, and we start to do this stuff, and the director went, no, 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 no. Just the two of you be together and just kind of, you know, in place. So I, what he wanted to do, he, he realized that if we had done it the way we were supposed to do it, or supposedly we were supposed to do it, he'd have been there for a next, another month shooting all the coverage because we were all over the place. This way, he does a master, which is the two of us. Then he does a close-up of me, close-up of her. Thank you very much. Next shot. Now... In addition to that, they, they have, when you do a musical scene, a dance scene, you don't hear music. You hear pops. Those are your steps. That's the beat, right? So I was stepping on the beat, you know, but I was doing whatever we had to do and trying to stay within the camera range we were supposed to stay in and just sort of, you know, that's why she was also doing, you know, this kind of thing. So which was really risky given that costume she had on. <laughs> Moving it all was like, okay, that's fine. So what happens was when they did the movie, when they cut it together, they put another song in, which had a different beat. Oh my. So instead of doing like this, it's like beat, boom. Beat, boom. It's like white men can't dance. <laughs> I had to live with that damn thing forever. The new Blu-ray um, DVD that's come out that did in Australia, they remastered the whole thing, they remixed it, and I'm now on the beat again. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. But I caught so much flack about that. 
I was like, it was not my fault. And so anyway, that was that, that was that huge dance. We had five sound stages at Buck Rogers taken up with that show. The hangar was in one entire sound stage. Uh, the ballroom scene was an entire sound stage. We had like 300 extras. Um, so, but it was a great experience. It was fun. I'm uh, I'm being given the signal that we have to we have to cut things off. But uh, is that Tony? Yep. <laughs> hey Tony. Ah, <laughs> uh, see. But okay, every- fine, Tony. <laughs> fine. Everyone's having a great time. Be a spoil sport. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm never coming back. Oh God. <laughs> well, thank you all very, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. I am Invader Zim, and I traffic in doom. And so, if you do not subscribe to this channel, you will have doom that befalls you by me, Invader Zim.